So a long time ago, I used to work at a certain fast food place. And I won't say which one in particular, but it rhymes with Barbies. Also, they have the meats. I was a backliner at Barbies, which meant that I was in charge of the meats. I made the sandwiches. I was on Frontline when I first started there, but I eventually phased my way to the back so I could avoid people. Which is ironic, because when it came to really rude customers, I was extremely confrontational. I was around 20 at that time, and for some reason was just so full of rage. I was that person who the Frontliners would threaten to call up front if they were dealing with a particularly nasty customer. I want to see your manager. I'll do you one better. Hey, Ferda! Even the managers would get me on occasion. Hey, this guy is complaining that what he ordered is exactly what he ordered. Oh, dang, that sucks. Hey, Ferda, do you want to deal with that? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I was a pretty scary 20-year-old. But aside from being a terrorizing 20-year-old at my local Barbies... <laughs> I have two particular stories of which to tell, both of which involve me being accused of murder. Wow! So like I said before, I worked on Backline 99% of the time, but of course this first story happened during one of those rare moments when I was working on the front. The only reason I was up there was because we were low on staff that day and I had to cover for someone who was going on break. Of course, I didn't really want to do that because Ew, people. And honestly, I could have argued against it, but it was a slow day and I would only be up there for about 30 minutes, so I sucked it up and went to register. Because at the time, I was a good employee. Because what's gonna happen within 30 minutes on front? Barely anything, I bet. <laughs> then this guy walks in. There's really nothing special about this guy, aside from the fact that he seemed to be in a hurry, which is whatever, plenty of people show up in a bit of a rush. So I don't leave this guy waiting. I go up to the register and immediately things are just a wee bit strange. This guy, for some reason, has decided that he should order on the other end of the counter. I'm at the register, and he's as far away from it as possible. It honestly felt like a liminal space, but I don't think too much of it. I straighten myself out and I say, hi, what can I get? What kind of drinks do you have? Okay... And you see, aside from being immediately irked by this man, this question always irked me a bit more because it's not as if we have a fountain machine in our lobby and a giant menu hanging above with coke written all over it. These little annoyances are starting to add up, but whatever, whatever, whatever. I say, we have coke products. And he goes, do you have anything else? Which is a bit of a funny question, but honestly more reasonable than his first because as a matter of fact, we did. So I tell him, we have orange juice, bottled water, but he cuts me off again and says, give me an orange juice. And now with his rudeness, it's gotten to the point where I just want this guy gone. So I ring the guy up. He's still standing on the other end of the counter, by the way. And I say, okay, sir, that'll be 189. And this is where he goes from rude and strange to I might be in some sort of danger because he turns his head towards me and he says, what did you say? I said, that'll be 189. You want me to pay for it? Yes? You're actually making me pay for this. Yes? I was completely taken aback. And at first, I thought this guy might have been joking, as unfunny customers do. Oh, it won't scan? I guess it's free! But because he's standing on the far end of the counter, I can very visibly see that this guy is now clenching his fists and slightly trembling in what I can only assume is anger. There were no words exchanged between the two of us for a moment, because I honestly didn't know how to respond to this. So in order to break the uncomfortable silence, I say, I can't just give you an orange juice, sir. This is a restaurant. I would hope at his age he'd have figured that out by now, but no. This guy was apparently as baffled about this situation as I was. Fortunately, unfortunately, he didn't press it much further than that and just reached into his back pocket and pulled out two $1 bills. He then proceeded to do that thing where he just tosses his money on the counter instead of actually handing it to me. And the thing is, he is still standing on the other end of the counter! It's become clear to me that this man has some semblance of a superiority complex and had decided the moment he walked in that he was above transactions and and could be nothing but rude, albeit very passively. Unfortunately for him, I take my competition very seriously. So I decide to take my lovely time, slugging my way over to his $2 bills on the opposite end of the counter, and then slugging my way back to the register to cash him out, and then slugging my way back over to him with his change. That I, of course, returned his earlier favor by dropping it on the counter in front of him. And at this point, this guy was visibly shaking with what I could only assume was anger. But that didn't matter because deep down inside, I was angrier. The orange juice cooler was right behind me, so I turn around to grab the orange juice. But before I can be sluggishly petty, he literally reaches over the counter, grabs it out of my hands, and starts chugging. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Now, I need you to know, during this entire time, two of my managers had actually been watching this entire situation play out in the side office that's out of sight from, but right next to the front counter. They could see and hear everything that was going on. And I am so glad they were, because if they hadn't, I'm not certain anyone would have believed what this guy said next. After he was done chugging his orange juice, this guy leans over the counter and is just panting, which is incredibly uncomfortable. But once he catches his breath, the guy stands up straight and he says something that caused every function of my brain to shut down. He says, somehow you knew, excuse me, you knew that I'm diabetic. My sugar was dropping, but you knew. So you just wouldn't give me the orange juice. I could have died, but you would have liked that. I bet you want me dead. And before I could respond, not that I really could have, he just walks out. I cannot describe to you the feeling. One of my managers was red in the face laughing and the other was just as heckin' stun locked as I was. It was like this guy had just thrown a flash grenade and dipped. And I felt some mixture of horrible and complete disbelief as I suddenly realized the now possible reason as to why he had been shaking the moment he walked in. I don't have diabetes. I don't really know anyone who does. And therefore, I don't know what it's like having to deal with it. And I know that panic and shock can be one hell of a drug. Trust me, I've been there. But this man was obviously cognitive to a degree. If he had walked in and just said, hey, I'm diabetic and my sugar is dropping, can I get a drink? I would have given him two orange juices for free because oh my God, you don't wait until the last second to tell someone that you are probably dying in their lobby. To this day, I'm still not certain how to address the fact that this guy had weaponized his illness for pettiness sake and then accused me of murder. I mean, he could have been lying about having diabetes just to make me feel bad, but I don't think he was. Lying, I mean, he was definitely trying to make me feel bad. My managers were basically giving me impromptu therapy for the rest of my shift because I just dealt with the matter of life and death in the most petty way and had not a single clue. I almost killed a man. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did. Needless to say, that was the last time I was on Frontline. The second time I was accused of murder has a much more satisfying conclusion, which is why I decided to keep it for last. I was on backline when this guy decides to order an Italian sub with no mayo. Simple, considering that the sub didn't come with mayo. We asked him to clarify that he didn't want the garlic aioli sauce on it, and he responds with, no, no sauce. So you don't want the vinaigrette either? No sauce. All right, Caveman Steve, we'll get right on that. So I put on my gloves and I make the dry, sad, sauceless sandwich and send it up. But not three minutes later, the guy comes back up to the counter with the sandwich and he is fuming and yelling. Where's the asshole who made this sandwich? I see him standing back there, you stupid bat. <laughs> huh? My managers, of course, come running out of the side office to see what the hell is up. And this man, and I use this term loosely, explains that he asked for no sauce and there is in fact sauce on this sandwich. Not only that, but he now wants to sue specifically the dumb <laughs> on backline who made it because obviously this was an attempted murder. Because get this, he's allergic to mayo. And I had never been more excited in my life. Firstly, because this man had no actual case here. This would not hold up in a court of law, I assure you. Secondly, because I know for a fact that there is not sauce on that desert of a sandwich. Thirdly, this guy for some reason thinks I'm a dude he's gonna take it outside with. And finally, I had the most wonderful idea of what he was saying was sauce on that sandwich. And I think my managers felt me back there just absolutely vibrating because I hear one of them say, Pixverda, can you come up here, please? I giddily skulk around the corner to the front and immediately this guy's entire demeanor changes upon seeing that I am not some random dude, but am in fact a 5'6 woman. Uh, what seems to be the problem, sir? <coughs> There's a <coughs> mayo on the sandwich when I asked for no mayo. Well, seeing as I'm the one who made your sandwich, I made extra sure not to accidentally put any sauce on it. But let me make sure I open the sandwich. Hmm, yeah, I don't see any sauce on this. Could you point to where the sauce is, please? And this man, as if he had some sort of gotcha moment, points exactly to the thing I thought he would. I was nearly in tears at this gift I had just been given because this man had just dug his own grave. And as proudly and as loudly as I can, I say, sir, that is not sauce, that is cheese. And before he can respond, I continue with, would you like me to make it without the cheese? 
And see, this may seem like I was giving him a convenient out, but this, my friends, is where I believe this man finally realized how deep in he was. Because he had two options now. Either admit that he was wrong about the sandwich, therefore showing the entire crowd in the lobby how childish a display that was to be threatening staff over sauce, or have a dry meat and veggie sandwich with no cheese, which is the only thing that really makes that sandwich worth it. Like no sauce, no cheese, like what? Okay, and to save his pride, he says, well, I didn't want the cheese either. Oh, of course you didn't. Be sure to order like that next time. I go to the back and I make his now even drier sandwich, the tomatoes holding on for dear life, and send it up, the man finally leaving with his sad sandwich and even sadder self.